Hey everyone, Teacher Ashley here again. Let's cover technology. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you're not quite done yet. Make sure you click on that bell icon so you're updated about each new video. It can be scary, but don't let it. Let's get techie today. Because you want to make sure that you are set up for success and you do not, I repeat, do not want to have any teacher IT issues because you don't get paid for those. And we don't want that. We want to get paid for everything that we do in all of our time, right? Now, if you are a current teacher already, you may actually still get some value from this video. Although I am going to focus predominantly on getting new teachers acclimated with using the practice room and how to get set up during their interview process. However, there is going to be some nuggets in here that may also benefit you if you are a current teacher. We're going to cover how to say no to teacher IT issues. Let's go. They recommend that you download the PC app. And I would recommend that you only download the VIP Kid Teacher app if you have a Mac or if you're going to be teaching from an iPad or something like that, it needs to be an Apple product because the app for Windows seems to have a lot of difficulties and there seems to be technical issues. You're going to be better off if you're running Windows using Google Chrome, the latest version of Google Chrome, instead of the VIP Kid app for your interview process. If you want to download it after you're already hired and test it out and see if maybe it does work with your setup, then that's great. And if you have any technical issues, you can always report it to VIP Kid and help make that app that much better. But as of right now for your interview process, I would just recommend to plain it stay safe. And if you are using Windows or if you're on a PC, use Google Chrome with your with Windows and the teacher app with Mac. Enough about that. Let's go ahead and head into the practice room. Okay, so I'm actually going to go into the practice room and do a demo lesson for you. So that way you can see kind of what I would do. When you click on enter the practice room, you might end up getting this pop up that says Adobe Flash Player version needs to be higher. Please upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and allow this because it's something that I need. And you might end up needing it for your browser as well. So this is always something good to do beforehand. You do want it to allow your microphone and your video. So make sure you always click allow when you enter the classroom. This pop-up is going to come up every time you come into this. This is the old version of the classroom. You can click on I see. And then you're going to go over to this docs folder on the left hand side. Click on that. Click uploaded by myself. And then you you probably will only have one option here. So just go ahead and click open that's going to load the PowerPoint that you're going to teach. Okay. And then you can also open your camera. You need to let it allow again. And here we go. Here I am. And this is the slide for the interview demo lesson. Okay. So let's get a little bit more into the techie things and how to fix things if a problem arises. First of all, if you hit open camera and your camera does not come up, make sure you have clicked that allow button that actually should be in the top over there. <laughs> up here by the, the VIP kid where the other allow things that were coming up for the Chrome browser were popping up. If you click open camera and your camera's not open, you might have another one of those notifications that have come up and it needs you to click allow. If you do not see that notification for some reason, you might want to check for one of those, um, the warning signs in your Chrome browser because maybe um, you didn't allow it to show you those notifications. So you want to make sure you can see those so you can allow them. Also, maybe you're having problems with the microphone. Down over here, you can see that there's microphone volume, and you can tell that I'm talking because this the it's the volumes is going up and down, up and down the volume bar. The louder I talk, the higher it gets. The quieter I talk, the softer it gets. Right, the lower. Now, if I don't talk at all, this no audio input detected will pop up 
I was waiting for it to pop up because it was popping up earlier when I was trying to load the classroom. But I couldn't get it to pop up now to save my life, of course, when I'm trying to show you. So sometimes that'll pop up. And if, it, if you don't want to see those things because you can already tell that your microphone's working, you can click on don't show and that stuff will not come up. Now, your kids, I don't believe, can see that at all. So it's really not that big of a deal. But it's a good thing to alert if, if something, like maybe your microphone isn't working and you thought it was and you weren't paying attention to the bars or something like that then that's sometimes good. But other times that'll pop up and it pops up for no reason. You can s tell that the student can hear you because they're interacting with you and you can see the little bars moving. Uh, I think they've improved it from what it used to be, but just, just kind of be aware of that. The other thing you can do is go into the settings right here. You can see that's right under my where my image is. However, if I move that and I'm working in in the PowerPoint, then that settings option is going to go away. It's right next to your closed camera. So I'm going to go ahead and click on settings. And now I'm going to hear an echo for myself. You can change which microphone you're using. I'm going to leave it at my Yeti. You can change your volume. So if the kid's saying that they, they're having problems hearing you, you can move this up higher. Don't They recommend that it's less than 80%. Then also you can lower your noise. I don't usually mess too much with these, although sometimes if the kids say that they can't hear me and they have the volume all the way up, then I will move this volume up to 80%. Okay, then you can also test out the camera, make sure that that's working properly, and that you can see yourself. And you can also choose an input camera. I only have one camera on this computer. This is a different setup. Side note, if you are doing your interview and your background looks like mine, this is not acceptable. It needs to look like a classroom. Put something up there. You ha there's got to be something. Draw a picture. I'm not even joking. Put it up there. And this is new, the Smooth Clear or HD. I've never played with any of those, to be honest. I always just leave it at whatever it is, and that's been fine. And the sound, you can hit the play button. It's going to play audio for me. And then I can hear it, so then I say I'm done. Just as easy as that. And I think that's about it. In the regular classrooms, you're also going to have a refresh button that you can use. Um, it, it Basically, you also have the clear over here. So you can draw on the slides and then clear it. You're going to have a refresh button that looks like your refresh button on your web browser. So you can refresh the classroom. That's going to refresh everything for you and the student. So it's going to look like it's taking you out of the classroom and then putting you back in the classroom, essentially, if you need that. But using this practice classroom is an excellent way to make sure that everything is going to be working properly and that you have your camera set up to the correct camera if you happen to have multiple cameras and that it's make sure that it's going to work properly. Also the microphone, obviously for me I had like a bunch of different microphones that it could use because my web camera has a microphone but that one the students are not going to be able to hear me nearly as well so I want to be able to use the microphone that is right next to my mouth or right next to my face. Um, so at, on this computer I have a, a different setup so I actually have a Yeti microphone down here but also if I was teaching, maybe if I was traveling, then I would want to use the microphone that's actually on my headphones. But that's not the case right now. So anyway, make sure that you have the right microphone set up. Another issue that I run into is I actually normally teach from a Mac, an iMac, a desktop. So sometime, but I, I do have a headset. I have a Plotronics head, headset that I, I use that to teach. So, but I want the microphone that's right next to my mouth to be the one that's it's using and not the microphone that's automatically built into my iMac. So uh, you, I do have to go in and change that. I don't have to change it every time. However, you do want to make sure that that is set up properly. And occasionally you may notice that the student's having trouble hearing you, but they can hear you. And sometimes for whatever reason, if you switch in between different classrooms, that can get reset. Or I've, I've had it where recently, it seems like it's been more of an issue. I've already reported this, but 
whenever the firemen come in to help me fix something in the classroom, like, so the fireman might switch lines for us. And then sometimes for whatever reason, whenever they switch lines, it switches my microphone too. Even though I didn't change any settings and that's the settings that I've always used for all of my classes and that's what I would like them to remain, sometimes it switches. So then I have to go in there really quick and I have to change the settings back to what I want them to be, not what the class refreshed it to be. So that's just all in your settings button down button. here. And it's just as easy as selecting the one that you want, making sure you have the right camera. Obviously, if you can have it here, you don't have to taste that and just say done and you're ready to go again. And But you don't have to test necessarily the, the camera. If you already see yourself and it's just the microphone, then just fix the microphone and be done, okay? Hope that helps. If you need to watch the recorded version of my example for a demo lesson, I'll put the link right up there. All right, that's it. Thanks for sticking with me through this. And if you have any other questions, please leave a comment below or send me a message. I'd be happy to help you. Even if you are a seasoned teacher and you have already been with VIP Kid a while and you need some technical help, I'd be happy to help you. We can get it figured out together and see what's what's going to fix your problem. And for my soon to be new teachers that are going through the interview process right now, in the next video, we're going to assume that you have already successfully completed your interview, whether that's a recorded demo interview, a live demo interview, or the in-person coaching sessions. We're going to assume that you did it, you're done, you passed with flying colors, and move on to the certification tab. See you in the next video. If you have any questions, please make sure to comment below and also you feel free to check out the description box for even more information. Talk to you soon.